This intermediate saxophone is designed to make the step up from your student model smooth and enjoyable. Hey friends, I'm the Saxophone Oracle. This week we're talking about intermediate saxophones. Yes, intermediate saxophones. And I wanted to talk about this because I see all over the forums, I see people who are curious about them. Should I get one? Oh, I started out on this beginner saxophone and I'm thinking about an upgrade. Should I upgrade to this intermediate? Do you think it's a good price? Okay, so let's get down to it. Let's go dig and find the truth about intermediate saxophones. The first thing we need to ask ourselves is what do we need our saxophone to do? What do we need from a saxophone? So we need an instrument that's gonna sound good. We need an instrument that's gonna play with relative ease, so decent intonation, things like that. And we need it to be well constructed. We just don't want the instrument falling apart all the time and being in the repair shop all the time. But that's it, something that sounds good, relatively easy to play and reliable. That's it. So now, let's look at the difference between a student model horn and a so-called professional horn. When you buy a so-called student horn from one of the big reputable brands, what you're getting is a saxophone that sounds pretty good, plays with relative ease, and it's pretty robust, right? These are made with like the middle schooler in mind. Kids who are gonna drop them, and they're gonna smash back and forth on the school bus, things like that. So they're, they're built like tanks, they play relatively easily with pretty decent intonation, and they sound pretty good. Other than that, that's it. There's no bells and whistles, no frills, but you're getting a saxophone that does the things you need. Sounds good, plays easily, and is of solid construction. Now, when you buy a so-called professional saxophone, what are you getting? Well, you're getting a horn that sounds good. Again, it's functional. It's gonna play in tune, hopefully, with relative ease. And they're pretty well-built instruments. But the big difference is they are fancier. And that's, that's about it. They have more bells and whistles, right? You're gonna get a nicer color of lacquer. You're gonna get hand engraving on the bell or other parts of the body. These things cost money. You're gonna get high quality leather pads instead of synthetic pads. Are they better than synthetic pads or last longer? I don't know, but you're getting a high quality leather pad. You're getting blue steel strings and uh, blue steel springs rather than regular springs. The key touches, maybe they're not gonna be plastic. They might be mother of pearl or some other material. You're getting things like that. It's just a prettier, fancier thing. Now, when saxophones are advertised, we see things like this horn features ribbed construction and it has upper and lower stack adjustment screws, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let's put that on hold. We're gonna come back to that in a minute. Let's now talk older saxophones for a moment. Okay, it wasn't so long ago that you had major companies making saxophones and they made one kind of saxophone. So if you played a Selmer saxophone, you went to buy a Selmer saxophone, you got a Mark 7 or a Mark 6 or a Balanced Action or a Radio Improved, whatever the model was at the time. But there was only one model to buy, right? If you bought a Selmer, you bought a Mark 6. If you played a Con, you bought a 6M, or you bought a Transitional, or a Chewberry. If you bought a Martin, you had a Committee. If you bought a King, you had a Super 20 or a Zephyr, something like that. But again, there was no student model, intermediate, and professional. There was just a saxophone, and they did the job for everyone. They were all professional saxophones. Now, let's talk briefly about saxophone design. Okay, so the saxophone was pretty much perfected in the 1950s. It was called the Mark VI. It was made by the Selmer Company, and that's the gold standard. That's the benchmark. And every single saxophone that comes after, no matter the brand or what it is, they're all based on the Mark VI. In terms of improvements or research and development that has changed the instrument to significantly benefit the player, that equals quite literally a big eh. Zero, okay? The Mark VI has been and is the be-all, end-all. Everything after that is based off of the Mark VI platform. There are no significant improvements, at least from the player's point of view. Now, sure, 
research and development has gone into lots of things, and we hear all these things, adjustment screws and rib construction and these things, and we have extra posts and extra arms on the keys. Yes, all these things are improvements on the manufacturer side. So there are ways that we can make the, horn more make the horn more efficiently, put it together, take it apart more efficiently. It makes the horn better for the manufacturer and for the repair tech. It's easier to work on the horn. But in terms of functionality for the saxophone player, response, sound, all of that, it hasn't changed. It's still a Mark VI that we're all playing, whether it's not a Mark VI, actually. Let's stay with vintage horns for a second, okay? If you've ever played a vintage horn back to back with a modern horn, the big difference you're gonna notice probably right away is that a modern horn a modern horn is way heavier, right? It's a much heavier horn. And the reason for that are all these so-called innovations. They have all these extra things soldered on the body, extra posts and arms and things like that. And these so-called improvements, well, it makes for a heavier horn. And in my opinion, you start soldering stuff all over the tube of the saxophone, you're deadening the sound. So it's kind of against what you really want in the first place. But that's here nor there, I digress. The point is, a student horn, especially from a reputable company, you're getting a good sounding horn that plays well and is reliable. It's just no frills. And the pro horn you're getting, it's, it's basically the same thing. It's still the design of a Mark VI, just you're getting all the bells and whistles. So, you know, it's like you're getting a Toyota Corolla or you're getting a Lexus. They're made by the same company, but one's is bare bones and cheaper, and the other one is, is got all the frills and all the fancy things, and it's significantly more expensive. But Unlike cars, from the entry level to the top of the line, there is no real difference in between, right? At least with a car, you got the entry level car, you might wanna spend a little bit more money for something in between because it has something like air conditioning, right? If you live in Arizona, that might come in handy. Or maybe you want an automatic transition instead of the stick shift, right? At least it makes sense going between. But with saxophones, there's not. It's simply a marketing ploy to get you to spend and waste more of your money. Okay, now listen to this blurb that I pulled off of the website of a major saxophone or a major instrument retailer, right? This is not a manufacturer, but a retailer, the place that's selling horns. And here's what they have to say about intermediate saxophones. So, you're not quite at that professional play every night for a living level, but you're also no longer just a student learning the ropes and getting the handle of your instrument. Luckily, we have the perfect selection of intermediate saxophones that tow that line between student and professional. These are instruments that are still going to help you learn and progress with your music without being too difficult or challenging to handle. Shop our entire selection of wonderful <laughs> intermediate instruments. I mean, how, how ridiculous is that? Did anyone ever say when they got the Mark VI, oh, that was just too, that's just too hard to handle? You know, and like when I, when I have students, I let them all try my professional instruments. And not once, not ever in the history of any teacher, I'm sure, has someone come in with their student horn, tried their teacher's professional horn, and said, oh boy, that's really too difficult for me. I, I better stick with my, my uh, cheap horn for now, right? It's just it's ridiculous. Okay, I don't know about you, but I personally find that hilarious. But now let's talk seriously for a moment about student or entry level instruments, because I think these instruments really do make sense. Let's face it, why would anyone shell out thousands and thousands of dollars for a top of the line horn when they don't know if they're still gonna be using that instrument two, three months from now? I mean, the, the truth is most people, when they decide to play an instrument, they abandon it pretty quickly because for whatever reason, they don't realize how difficult it is to learn an instrument or be able to play an instrument well. They don't appreciate the amount of time commitment and all of that that's involved in learning an instrument. So why spend five grand on a saxophone just to have it collecting dust two months later? And the same thing, it makes sense for students, right? The kids played in school. Most of these kids aren't going to go on to be musicians. They don't have other ambitions. So why should a parent shell out thousands and thousands of dollars when you can get a good, reliable instrument for, for you know, an entry-level cost? Makes sense. The other thing is that 99% of the saxophone players in the world 
aren't professional players. They're certainly not making a living at it. And most of them are nowhere near being in that level where they could even possibly try, right? And the thing about saxophone players is, if you're a terrible saxophone player, you're gonna sound just as terrible on the fanciest, most expensive instrument as you do on your entry level instrument. And if you're a professional player, you're gonna sound just as good on an entry level instrument as you do on your pro horn. That's simply the truth. And in fact, there are many, many professional players who choose for various reasons to play entry level horns. It's the truth, it's what it is. So if the average player goes and buys an entry level horn from a reputable company, it can, and in fact, it will serve you for your entire playing career from the day you pick up the horn until you put it down. There's no question, they're great instruments. But people being people, sure, we all like nice, fancy things. We've been playing for a while. We want something nicer. Great, so if you're gonna upgrade, why even look at the intermediate section, right? Because you're not getting anything better than what's in your student model horn, and you're not getting anything close to the quality of the professional level horn. So just like, forget about it. <laughs> Let's go back to the automobile analogy for one second, because just like cars, Saxophones, when you go into that shiny showroom and you leave with a brand new saxophone, it depreciates and it depreciates instantly. And not a little bit, we're talking big time. If you spent $5,000 on that shiny new saxophone, you bring it home and need to get rid of it 20 minutes later, you're gonna be lucky to get half of what you paid for it. I'm, I'm serious, and this goes across the board, whether it's a student horn, an intermediate horn, or a professional horn. The values tank, it's in no way an investment. And sure, everyone points to these Selmers going on eBay for 15, 16, 20, 25 thousand dollars. Okay, first of all, are they actually selling at those asking prices? But second of all, sure, but we're talking about pristine examples of vintage instruments that you can no longer get. We're talking about never re lacquered, never dropped, no pull down in the lack, 98, 99% lacquer intact. These are pristine. Any other saxophone, it's less than half the price of what it was new. Okay, now here's something from another huge saxophone retailer. And believe me, you, you all know who, who this is. This is what they have to say about the intermediate saxophones they're selling. Intermediate saxophones are often overshadowed by their pro counterparts. However, there's huge value in these models and for many will deliver everything you need from a saxophone without busting the bank. <laughs> really? Value? Okay, I apologize for my terrible uh, English accent. But really, value? Let's go take a look. We're going to look at Yamaha saxophones today, simply because I'm quite positive they sell more saxophones than any other company in the world. And incidentally, Yamaha has four levels of saxophone. So they have their entry level, they have their low intermediate, they have their high intermediate, and they have their professional level. So <laughs> you have the pleasure of buying a beginner horn, a little better horn, a little better still, and then finally the really good horn if you're, if you're following the uh, hierarchy of Yamaha saxophones. So what I've done is I've gone to Amazon, and now let's compare. So the Yamaha, their entry-level saxophone is the 280 model. So for an entry-level alto saxophone, shiny, brand new, it's retailing for about 1,300 American dollars. 1,300 US dollars for a shiny brand new entry level saxophone from Yamaha. Now, their intermediate model, their lower intermediate model, it's the 480. That's retailing for $2,500 approximately. $2,500, so basically double the price of the entry level instrument. And you're not getting double the horn for that value. Remember, right? You're getting, you're getting a good horn, don't get me wrong. All of Yamaha's horns are really well-built horns, but you're not getting a pro horn and you're not getting much better than that entry-level horn. Now, we step up to the next intermediate model, the Yamaha 62. These are retailing for about $3,200. 3,200 $3, US dollars for a not top-of-the-line instrument, another intermediate instrument. 
And then finally we get to Yamaha's top of the line, the 875. So on Amazon, I couldn't find a regular lacquer. I found one that's silver lacquered. So let's knock $1,000 off the price. Let's, let's pretend it, take, it costs $1,000 to put uh, silver plating on a saxophone. So if it was just a regular saxophone, let's say the top of the line Yamaha Alto, 5,500 US dollars. Now let's check the value. And here's how I propose we do it. We look at what these saxophones are gonna sell for on the used market if one day you decide to upgrade and you have to unload your saxophone, okay? And I'm talking about actual sales price because we see on the online forums on Facebook dealers saying, oh, look, you can get this next to new professional saxophone for $1,000 off the cost of retail. What a deal, right? But are these instruments actually selling for that? I don't think so. I rarely anyway, unless they're finding suckers to buy them. So I've gone to eBay and I've looked at past auctions, ones that are already finished, where we see the actual selling price of the instrument, or we see the asking price and we see that they've accepted the next highest bid. So we get an idea at least that it didn't get to what they were asking. And here's the breakdown. For an entry level Yamaha, they tend to be selling for between five and 600 US dollars. So if you buy an entry level horn, you go and sell it a few years later, you're losing seven, eight hundred dollars. If you buy the step up horn, the 480, which incidentally, it's really hard to find comparables to this because no one's buying them obviously, but they're selling in and around the thousand dollar range. So $2,500 for a new instrument, they're selling for about a thousand dollars. You're throwing away 1500 American dollars right there. Let's look at the Yamaha 62, the upper level intermediate model. Those are selling for between 1500 and 1700 US dollars. Again, retailing for about $3,200. So they're losing half their value when it comes time to sell the instrument, right? So where is this investment, this so-called investment? You're not getting a better horn per se than the student model and you're not getting the top of the line. All you're doing is putting more money in the pockets of the retailers, the manufacturers, and you're just, you're throwing it away. Now, just for the sake of curiosity, the top of the line Yamaha, again, it's about $5,500 brand new. So let's look at some used examples. What is the closing price on eBay? They're going between $2,000 and $2,500. That's less than half the original purchase price. So it's not for this video, but it's something to consider. When it's time for you to upgrade and you're going to go for that pro horn, do you really want to go into that fancy, shiny retail store and pay $5,500 when you can get the same horn for between two and $2,500? I'm the Saxophone Oracle, and this week we're talking about intermediate saxophones and should we buy them. In my opinion, no. Stay clear, under no circumstance. Sure, if someone gives you a horn, great. Or for example, if you can get the intermediate horn in the same condition at the same price as the entry level horn, great, go for it. Otherwise, really, it's a scam. It's a design to take your hard earned money away. And those of you who follow my channel, you know, I don't do product reviews. I don't do endorsements, right? Simply because I don't think gear is important. Yes, you need good equipment, but nothing you buy is gonna make you a better player. It just, it really, truly doesn't matter. And I hate to see people wasting their hard-earned money on things they don't need. You know, I don't have an affiliates page, so you can go, I can get a cut of the money you're wasting on, on, on certain things, right? So take it or leave it. You're gonna do what you want with your money, but I think it's a terrible idea to invest in an intermediate horn. I hope you found the information useful. I hope this was helpful for you. As always, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. That really helps me out, so go ahead and ring the bell if you like what you're seeing. Thank you, as always, for continuing to watch. I love to hear from you. Drop a comment, send me an email. That's it. I wish you a great week. Happy practicing. Bye for now.